Hello everyone. In this presentation, I will discuss two different ways to think about your career development. Going deep versus going wide. On the left, you see a column. Career path at Google. Facebook, Lyft, Uber copied it and it's more or less like widespread where three means junior, four middle, five senior and six is staff. When you just like to give you a perspective, if you don't have a PhD and you're joining a company just like fresh grad, you're going for L3. If you have PhD, you're joining as L4. If you work hard and you are impactful and performance committee and your manager believe that you are doing well, you can go from one level to another and this will mean more impactful, more interesting projects more responsibilities and also more money. Every jump is about $100,000 to a total compensation per year. But the thing is that even if you work hard and even if you train state-of-the-art models as machine learning engineer or as a researcher you publish, state of the, or publish papers at top conferences, most likely you will never go above level six, level five. It is your glass ceiling. So what is the issue? Many people, including me, a couple years ago, assumed that your skill development career path looks like this. First, you know some kind of programming languages, Python, then you master some libraries like Scikit-Learn and XGBoost, then you look in the sides and maybe you are required to make your work more reproducible and more. And if you master Docker, then deep learning, PyTorch, TensorFlow, you want to build services, you invest in Togo, and it goes on and goes on. In some of the skills, you invest a lot of time, maybe because you enjoy them more, or maybe because they are required for your projects. In some of them, you learn only at the level of being able to apply them to your tasks. But you see at the top, in the title, you see in theory. Why in theory? Because the story is more complex. In practice, it looks like this. When I mean in practice, I mean performance committee that is judging your work twice a year in these big companies. They are not only looking at your technical expertise, they are looking for these three different domains. Technical ownership and communication. Technical is more or less straightforward, how good you are in these different technical things about ownership. For ownership, it is considered that as a junior, you work on the things on the task level, as a middle on the feature level, at the as a senior on the project level, and as a staff on this cross-team, cross-functional projects. And that's where it becomes tough. For communication, it doesn't just mean you, you are able to talk to people. For sure, it's required. It's more about people around you, above you, stakeholders and parallel teams and people that may be more junior people in your team. Everyone understands what you're working on, how it is impactful, why you're doing this and how to transfer this knowledge. And this means documentation, presentation, alignments, making people that don't report to you to do tasks that are beneficial for your project, meaning finding some kind of some ways for better alignment. All of this falls in this communication domain. Many people assume that they are judged and their level, and I'm thinking about like junior, middle, senior, is based on their technical depth. You learn new fancy framework and that's why you are more skilled, you are more less replaceable and your level should go up. But the truth goes in different way. Your level, at least how this committee looks at it, is judged based on your minimum level. For example, if you're extremely good technically, but you can't deliver, you don't own the project or the level of feature, it means that you're still a junior, even if like you technically are really good. Why? Because company cannot leverage your expertise. So all three are important. And people may undervalue this soft skill ownership and communication columns. So if you want to advance your career, you cannot stay eye-shaped. You cannot like stay specialist. You need to add depth, uh, breadth to your knowledge and to master different things. By the level of people getting to the senior, they're already T-shaped. The thing is just to go deeper, to, to advance your career anymore, you need to become even more T-shaped or what is called M-shape or some other type of the shape where you have different specializations but still a wide range of complementary skills. 
So why companies are interested in T-shaped labor? First of all, it's easy to toss them between projects. Imagine Google closed Google+, Plus. what to do with all people involved with this. They were reassigned tasks within an organization and they might not be related to the social network Google+, Plus or any other of this. It can be backend or something else. Or Google Glass or I don't know, like TensorFlow. And this is good for the company. Why? Because it makes it flexible. Companies are able to experiment with different projects, Google+, Plus, Google Wave, Google Glasses. These are examples. You, you try, you try hard, you spend money, you do good effort, doesn't work, such is life. You move on. In order to do this like transition, moving on easy, people should be have some breadth, some breadth in their knowledge. Okay, so decreased bus factor. If there is a person, this like key person, I don't know, maybe machine learning specialist in a company, in a project, and no one understands what this person is doing, or maybe no one is machine learning expert in this, if this person gets into the bus or just leaves the company, project will be frozen for some time or even closed because they will not be able to continue. But if different team members are able to know what's going on there and have some kind of expertise and they will be able to pick this up, this is much better, more safe for the company. And of course, if people have different skills, less people can do the job, can do the project successfully, and this is more cost efficient for the companies. Why would you like to become into shape? Of course, you can lead larger scale projects. Uh, you understand the general picture bigger, you were exposed to many different things, and they get and got, get composed into a bigger picture, and this is pretty good. Uh, of course, in, from the more selfish reasons, broader you have a broader job market. Example, for my first position, I was working in energy disaggregation startup. For my second, I worked in a debt collection agency. And the third is this lift self-driving. Next one, I don't know what will it be, but maybe something else, maybe not related to self-driving at all. And the fact that I have background in software engineering, machine learning that are highly transferable helps me with this. As a nice addition, you work with many interesting people. We are social people and we, we need to communicate with, with some folks that makes us happy. We have this desire. Pandemic affected this a lot and this is probably one of the reasons why many people want to get back to offices. So when you work on larger scale projects, you are exposed to people with different backgrounds, different ways of thinking, and this feels pretty good. The issue with all this story that it is really good for the market, being T-shaped for people is really good for finding jobs, for making companies successful, but there is nothing about you being happy. I think, or I believe everyone in the industry, is, at least in tech these days, has imposter syndrome. You enforce to go wide and this means that you're master of none in many fields and you feel insecure about this. Many people, including myself, we just start in the free time to make this feeling smaller, but this is an issue. Multitasking is a constant bitch. When you juggle between these different tasks, not knowing them deep enough as you would like, and also juggling them, there's like a lot of overhead in terms of willpower energy. Not all things that you need to learn that are interesting to you, this is also pretty frustrating. You work with numerous people and not all of them make you happy. Some of them are really intelligent, as I mentioned before, but there's a decent amount of them that you absolutely don't want to work with, but such is life you're enforced with. Uh, many people feel that they're losing their deep knowledge, some of their like, muscles that they developed in university and in the first years of their career, for example, when they do transition to from individual contributors to managers, this is also painful. And again, on the larger scale, many people feel that due to the fact that these projects go too slow and you're like becoming more replaceable due to the lack of specialized knowledge that is like going away, you're wasting your life. It doesn't feel good. Okay, what if you don't go wide? Going wide is painful, as we just discussed. Uh, you can stay in academia. Academia is a good place and many people that I know, they move away from big tech companies to academia purely because it's more fulfilling, it feels better, and you can, you, you're allowed and can afford to go on something deep. So, side effect, like no money. If you want a bit more money, or maybe you like flow of industry more, sure, middle or junior positions in industry, you can afford being narrow. Senior and above, there is no way. Instead of conclusion, what I would like to say, 
if you want to advance your career, you don't have a choice. You need to add some wide knowledge. You need to become master of none in many things in addition to your original specialization. At the same time, I believe if you will just like focus on this like shallow thing, trying to pick up many things on the shallow surface level, it is very frustrating. At least it is for me. I believe that you need to find some time for a deep work. Maybe it's Friday, like cancel meetings and ignore this work task and focus on Kaggle or papers or doing biology or something else, just to decrease frustration and stress in your life. And also, again, in the long-term perspective, I believe it's a good, a good investment. And again, in terms of career, at some point, it may happen that you're much less replaceable, which feels good.